Hello everyone. Thank you for watching. We've recently been getting lots of queries about web filtering. Schools have been asking, is our filtering appropriate? Are we meeting new standards and guidance? Is there anything we need to change or do or be aware of? So we're making a series of guidance videos and other notes to help you with that. And today we're looking at checks, regular web filtering checks. What does that mean? What do you need to do? So first of all, who said you need to? You may have noticed that in March, the Department for Education published these new standards for filtering and monitoring. And if you delve into them, there is mention of carrying out reviews, but also carrying out checks. And they're not actually the same thing. So if you want to find out more about the annual review, then we have guidance on that as well. But today we're focusing on the checks. Now, first of all, who should actually be doing this? Is that clear to you? There's plenty more details in the standards and you do need to have a look at them. But one of the standards itself is to assign roles and responsibilities. So that will help you with thinking about this particular question. When it comes to the day to day management, yes, you need the safeguarding and tech teams to work together. So the checks, yes, can be carried out by technical people, but it's really important to work together on it. So do think about exactly who is doing what and the standards will help you with that. Now, I did say before checks and review are not quite the same thing, but what on earth is the difference? They do sound the same, but it's not quite the same thing. A review is something you might do annually. Indeed, it's recommended in the standards. It's more of a strategic exercise to think about what do we believe at this school? What is our approach? What do we want to happen? What do we want to have looked or not on a general level and by whom? Whereas checks are more operational day to day. Is it still working? Is it working everywhere? That kind of thing. Now, it might be worth taking a step back to think about why the checks are needed in the first place. There are lots of reasons we could give for this, but just remember technology does not stay still. So even if nothing changed in your school, and trust me, it does, uh, in terms of new devices, new users, new systems do come on stream all the time. Even without that, technology changes all the time, settings change all the time. So it's really important to know that nothing has changed and you're still filtering in the way that you think you are. So moving on then to what we actually need to do. First, you need to decide a few things. Then we move on to finding some stuff out. You need to decide who's going to do your checks and how often. We might recommend about once a half term seems a sensible way to do it. But what's really key is that it's all documented and then the checks and processes are logged and monitored at the best. So really key opportunity for IT and safeguarding teams to work together. But what are you actually trying to find out? It's summarized in the bullet points you can see on the screen here. In a nutshell, are we blocking the things that we think we are blocking? Are we over blocking? And that could be in terms of stopping teachers getting to curriculum sites. So teaching and learning can't proceed as it should do. It could be um, stopping the day to day operation of the school because things are blocked that they shouldn't be. Or it could be as simple as not giving children and young people a realistic idea of what going on the Internet is like, because after all, we're trying to prepare them for when they go home, when often lots of blocks are not in place. So it's really key to wrap what we're doing up with a bit of realism as well and teaching them about what to do when they see things they might be concerned about including it and incorporating it into lessons and facilitating and empowering colleagues um, to be able to have conversations about teachable moments if something has been seen that you might think might not be ideal and so on. You can overblock by having things too strict. It's not going to be good preparation. So just bear that in mind. It's something you can check every half term as well. Beyond that, though, third point on the screen is filtering active everywhere so that means all connections devices users accounts systems it does need checking because new things will have happened safe search is something else to consider that often people forget about it can be just as important as the filtering itself because without safe search you might be suggested websites um, that you then need to that's the filtering for um, to see if you're going to them or not. So it's really key. Safe search is on, 
but also enforced so a student can't simply turn it off and then search again for something inappropriate. So please do look out for that. And of course, have there been any concerns about students bypassing blocks? Have there been concerns about overblocking raised either by students or teachers since the last time that you did your checks? Now, this slide, I'm not going to work my way through because you do need to have a look at it, either open it on a big screen or print it out. As you can see, this is working through the steps to help you find out the things we've just been talking about. There are various links that you can click on or go to in order to work out that you're filtering on particular devices and what. Also other links from organizations like the Safer Internet Center to test various other elements of your filtering and things about Safe Search and YouTube. But do focus on the red on this document. It's all about making sure that safeguarding and IT teams are working together because your technicians can help you work out what are the different types of user, location, device, account system, and so on. So really important to work together on that and document it as well, with, of course, the opportunity to speak to other staff who are not involved in either of these teams and to pupils and students as well in terms of concerns that they might have. So that was it in terms of checks. Review is also important. So for your strategic annual filtering review, one suggestion that we have is you might want to incorporate it into your online safety audit. The last two years of Casey have mentioned the online safety audit. We've got a template which is freely available to any school in the country to use from online safety audit.lgfl.net. If you go there, you can use the tool for free and it covers all sorts of areas, but includes filtering. So you can incorporate your filtering review into this uh, by doing it as part of the online safety audit alongside approach, curriculum, systems, and so on. So do have a look at that. Remember training, of course, too. I hope that was helpful. If you want to find out more about the Elgefell system and the new functionality that's coming in order to help you be even better in meeting these standards, go to schoolprotect.lgefell.net. You can also go to KC, that's K-C-S-I-E dot net in order to find out more guidance and advice around keeping children safe in education, the new version and in general. Um, there's lots this year on filtering because that's a big change, but also the other elements as well that will link into our training and other tools that can help you. We'd love to hear your feedback and there'll be more guidance along this line coming soon in some other videos and documents. Thank you for joining us.